Hey, good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well. So I'm excited to do the icebreaker exercise, uh, very similar that I'm having you do the icebreaker exercise for the course, uh, COM 100 Interpersonal Communication. So obviously the reason for doing this exercise is to get to know a little bit about you as it gives me a glimpse into your little world and your personality and some of the your favorite things to do. And so I'm going to join you and also do the icebreaker so that you can get a little glimpse of my world and a little bit about what my interests are. So let's have fun with it. So my name is uh, Rudy Lopez. I'm the professor and I've been teaching at uh, Santa Santiago Canyon College. This will be my first semester, so I'm excited to be a part of the communication, communication studies department. So my major in educational goals. So uh, I started my college career path at El Camino College. I wasn't the best student in high school. Uh, I did barely the bare minimum as long as I was eligible to play soccer. Uh, beyond that, I wasn't really interested in school. So I consider myself a late bloomer. I'm one of those individuals that obviously during high school, I just did the bare minimum. I was content with being average. And then after graduating, fortunately, I did graduate with my diploma. Uh, I tried to go to El Camino College right after and I failed my first semester and I realized that I'm not mentally ready to go to college and go to school. So uh, I had already been working uh, during my high school years. I was working at the mall. And so I did what I knew how to do best was continue working. And so I was working uh, multiple jobs, earning money. And I told myself that I wasn't going to go back to school until I was ready and serious about about school. So after working for several years for Courtyard by Marriott, I applied for a management position. I felt that I was very qualified. I was certainly given the responsibility to manage the restaurant, to manage the staff. So I thought uh, this is just another step in my career. And to my surprise, I didn't get the job. And the reason why I didn't get the job was because I didn't have a degree. And that was when I decided that I needed to go back to school and get a degree. Uh, as well as many of my customers, which were business people, executives, and CEOs of the major companies in the area that were encouraging me to go back to school and get a degree. So when I didn't get the job promotion, I re-enrolled at El Camino College and started from the bottom. And I'm very grateful for community colleges because it gives a second chance to people like myself who maybe didn't, uh, wasn't doing well in high school and didn't have the grades to go to a four-year university right off the bat, but it does give a second chance to people that realize that education is a pathway out of poverty and it's a, it's a gateway for better opportunities. Uh, like myself and returning, returning veterans and adults, so uh, I'm grateful that we have a lot of community colleges in California because it gave me a chance. And so at El Camino, I majored in so many different disciplines. I kept changing my major. It seemed like every semester. And then finally, someone told me that you better uh, you better decide on what your major is going to be because you can't just keep taking classes uh, on everything, right? Because I was by the time I went back to El Camino, I was very curious. I was very interested in learning and knowledge. And so I wanted to study everything. And finally, I settled in on communication studies, fell in love with my public speaking course and a couple other courses that I took. And I decided that this is the subject matter that I want to focus on. And so I transferred to Cal State University, Dominguez Hills, majored in communications with an emphasis in public relations. After finishing that, I went to California State University of Fullerton, where I got my master's degree in communications with an emphasis in theory and research methods. Uh, the reason for that is because I thought I was going to go get my PhD in, at USC, uh, but since that, that goal has been changed. So my educational goals now is that I probably will go back to school in a couple years, but I want to study 
uh, sports psychology and human performance because it's a passion of mine. And I actually want to go back to school and study something I'm really interested in, even though I do love public speaking, but I'm very passionate about sports psychology and human performance. So minimum of three hobbies or anything you're passionate about. So first of all, I'm a very passionate person. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm passionate about, but my three hobbies are I love sports photography, <clears throat> so I'm a professional sports photographer. It actually started when my son was playing water polo and I was taking pictures of him. And then the team asked me to become the official photographer for the water polo program. And since then, I've been asked to take photos of the swim team, of soccer teams, basketball teams, volleyball teams, um, IndyCar racing, uh, professional soccer, professional volleyball. So it's it's something that I enjoy. And I love photography because I get to capture action in the moments, right? And so I like to take photos of people when they least expect it to get a certain reaction or certain expression on their face. And I love when people are enjoying my photos and they have wonderful memories because of my photos. Uh, so photography. So the second thing that I'm passionate about is I love to cook. I love cooking. And it's something that I've been doing since I since high school. I've enjoyed it. And I love to cook for other people and really try to expand my cooking abilities. So the third thing is that I love to read. So I have a library collection of about 500 books and I read about three books a month. And so I'm always reading and I'm always carrying books. So uh, those are my three hobbies. So what country are your parents from? My parents are from Mexico, uh, from Guadalajara, Jalisco. Uh, that's what they're from. Uh, I have not visited Mexico. So it's something that I want to do someday is to go visit uh, where they're from. And, and I think I've been to Mexico, but during a cruise, and I went to Cabo San Lucas and Mazatlan and Acapulco, but I didn't really get to see much of it because I didn't remember it because I was too busy being drunk. So I don't remember that. So uh, name a country you have traveled to and had a great experience or a country you would like to travel to. Uh, I was fortunate in 2010 to travel to Europe for about a month. So I've been to many countries in Europe. But the country that I had a wonderful experience is, is too. So I had a wonderful experience in France. Highly encourage all of you to go to France. Uh, there's so many wonderful architecture, food, art uh, for there to explore. And uh, I fell in love with the country of Greece. So I really love Greece, especially the, the islands. Uh, I fell in love with Santorini, Greece, which is a wonderful little island, and the food is amazing. Uh, the The island that I visited is is fantastic, and it's just like you see it in the advertisements on TV. The ocean's blue. Uh, it has its own little beautiful, unique look and everything, and highly encourage you to travel to Greece. So my top three favorite music artists are Eminem, Post Malone, and... Uh, Nirvana, Kurt Cobain. Okay. Uh, let's see. Current favorite shows to binge on movies, podcasts, or books. So lately I've gotten into Netflix and I'm very big on sports documentaries. So I've been watching every sports documentary on Netflix. And I've also been watching a lot of sitcom comedies or a lot of uh, sort of like reality season shows that has to do with sports, uh, sports, professional sports or sports psychology. So I do love sports documentaries. It's something that's a, a passion of mine. Uh, I don't get a chance to listen to podcasts, um, but when I do, uh, it, but it's very rare. So in books, as I mentioned, I have a collection of 500 books on a variety of subjects, uh, anything from finance, economics, history, uh, about learning about the mind, uh, wealth books, uh, nonfiction books mostly, and uh, books on uh, psychology, human nature, human behavior. I like studying about human nature and human behavior. So a lot of my books are like that. And it's just uh, been fascinating to collect books. So 
Um, my top three favorite foods and cuisines, I would have to say that's Japanese food, Mediterranean food, and uh, Japanese, Mediterranean, and Italian. So those are the three that I love. My favorite sports team is uh, USC uh, Trojans, University of Southern California Trojans, and Real Madrid in uh, Spain. Uh, I'm actually introverted, although a lot of people think that I'm extroverted, but I am introverted, but I'm also capable of being both. So are you a talker, listener, and observer? Uh, I am a talker. I am working on my listening skills, which I think that that's very important to be an active listener. Uh, so I am working to be more of a listener and less of a talker, but I am an extremely high observer. So I see everything, I observe everything, and I'm constantly watching human behavior, people's patterns, people's tendencies, uh, all the stuff, and I love people watching. So uh, who are your role models? Uh, I would have to say that my role models are some of my mentors and some of my colleagues that I've met over the years uh, that have been sort of like father figures to me and people that have really taught me good values, good ethics, and uh, just really showed by example. Uh, name three influencers or public figures that you admire or listen to. Uh, wow. Uh, I think that's a tough one to answer. Probably John Gordon, who's an author, Amy Morin, who's an author, and then probably, uh, John Maxwell, uh, are the people that are, are influencers or public figures that I listen to. Uh, so what are your expectations? So my expectations as an instructor is I want to make sure that you enjoy the class, that you enjoy the content. And I go way above and beyond to making sure that I provide uh, important information that you can use in your life and that you can apply it uh, because I'm a big believer in, in understanding human nature and human behavior. We live in a planet of billions of people and it's important to learn how to coexist and how to have good relationships with people. Uh, you're gonna be working with people in the workplace. Uh, you're gonna have friendships. Uh, you're going to have romantic partners, you you have families, you have siblings. It's important to really uh, learn how to uh, coexist and to understand and to relate and to connect to people. I think the world will be a better place if we really learn to try to understand each other and try to understand that everybody comes from different backgrounds and experiences. Uh, and more importantly, to add to our toolbox ways in which we communicate effectively because I think it'll solve a lot of problems and it'll probably help make sure that we become successful in our relationships and um, we start to make that reversal of which what I think is we have too many people that are hurt, pe people that are uh, that have unhealed wounds as a result of relationships and it doesn't need to be that way. So my hope is that the, the information that I share with you, that you'll really see it as high value, high quality information that you can apply. And I hope I can inspire you to take an interest in learning about human nature and human behavior and trying to understand uh, people and maybe hopefully encourage you to uh, take more uh, communication studies courses because we do have a lot of really great courses and they really help you to understand just people. So that's my expectation that I'm going to give you my best effort. And trust me, when I the information that I share with you, it's stuff that is what I've considered high value and worth worth your time to reading it. Uh, what I expect of um, um, of you as a student is to come with an open mind. Uh, I want you to take personal ownership and, uh, and responsibility for your, your responsibility for the class, which is to do the assignments, time management, be accountable to yourself. Uh, I want you to reach out to me if you need to, if you have concerns or you're struggling or, you know, life happens and stuff happens in life, unexpected things, and it's important for you to reach out to me and to communicate with me. I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you and I'm here to work with you. So feel free to reach out with me or join the Wednesday office hours and just 
come out and talk and I'm here for you. Uh, but I need you to reach out to me because otherwise I'm under the assumption that everything is going fine and I know that things happen. So uh, I just ask that you just give me good effort. Okay. Uh, what's the one thing you wish teachers knew about being a student that they don't know? This is not a trick question. Uh, please share with me uh, what are the challenges, struggles, knowledge gaps? What are some of the things that you struggle with as a student or what are things that... Uh, you know, this is an online course. This is a self-paced course. Uh, I know that I was once a student in which I didn't have the support of my family. My family didn't believe in me going to college. And so pretty much I was alone. And so uh, just let me know what challenges you have. What are some knowledge gaps? What are some things that you're curious about or that you want to learn? Uh, but just communicate with me because I don't know everything. And it's been a while since I've been a student. So I know that every generation is different. So the things that maybe were challenges to me are going to be different from what you're facing. Uh, so please help me to understand where you're at, what your experiences are. Okay. So I believe that's all the questions I've answered. I hope you've enjoyed uh, my responses and I'm, I want to thank you for your time. And I look forward to hearing your feedback and I look forward to watching your videos and learning a little bit more about you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.